Hello everyone and welcome back. So previously I was asked a few questions on um, cement for my wet dish and basically the questions were why I use different products and you can see in the background here I am Dyson and this product is Blue Circle my less one's Quinn um, so there was no particular reason for them two jobs for the reason why I use them brands bar that's what the builder supplied but I do chop and change brands and Quinn Quinn cement I would only really wet dice with whereas Blue Circle I would both wet dice with and I would render with um, but obviously um, depending on where you're watching this from your Portland cement may be different than mine um, so obviously this may differ where you're from um, being asked to do a carrying job in the chat but yes yes I'll, I'll get to that in a wee second dangerous Dave um, so just, just to answer the questions on the slap dice was what why I use different ones so if the house was never going to get painted it would be very important when you're dashing to stick to the same cement the same ratios um, so that everything will dry out the same color and it'll all look nice and uniform um, Quinn cement may not be the best one for that um, and blue circle I call it blue circle they have actually changed the bag it's like um, just a black and white bag and there's no blue circle on it anymore and it doesn't say blue circle either um, so it's, I think they're l large if the company um, do have a picture of the bag and um, that'll be on the end of the video and I'll sort of chat quickly about them and um, also your wet dice you can wet dice in different colors you can wet dice funny enough with Kerriand Kerriand have um, a product you can mix and it'll come out yellow it basically will come out any color that you desire that you buy off Kerriand um, Weber I would assume have the exact same thing um, and it will come up very very strong I've done a few B jobs with similar things um, also the same dry dash um, but dry dash and wet dash two, two different things wet dash is when you're applying a wet mix or dry dash is when you're applying dry stones to uh, a render coat um, and the stones stick into that the bed in um, so but again back to the wet dash say I was doing a job in the country and the person wanted coins bands and base they sort of wanted uh, a lot of sort of detail work on their house I would maybe recommend doing the undercoat doing everything bar the wet dice finish with blue circle and then I would maybe do the wet dice finish with quin cement and the reason for that is well quin cement will dice nicely it'll dice pretty well and it's nice and sticky and the reason that I would say that is that your bands and base and coins will stand out more and your dice will stand out, they'll contrast, they'll dry out different colours but as, as long as, like I said, you keep your, your dice, you don't mix up any bags, you keep your dice coat all the same and that, that's coins in the background so them coins could dry out a very light grey or if I was to do a wet dice coat around them with say a quin cement it will come up like a bluer grey, a darker bluer grey where there'll be a light grey so if you were never going to paint your house or say you didn't, you built a house or you're, you're building a garage and you wanted something to look fancy and you didn't want the hassle of painting it that would be a tactic you would go after sort of changing up your cements like you could even go one step more you could do your bands a different colour again there is many a different different cement out there and I'm sure even your ratios when you change your ratios will change the colour slightly as well um, like there's I'm going to cover on that later um, of other cements I've used Quinn cement, Castle cements 
why I used them as well, but I want to show you the pictures of them. They'll be at the end. I'm just going to answer a few of the, the questions in the chat here. So, yes, I'll definitely do some more K-Rain uh, videos in the future. Um, if I'm on contract at the minute, so I can't, can't take any footage of this contract that I'm on. Um, a friend of mine, he's working away on a big house. And if I get done, there's wee bits of patching of k to do, which will be, that'll be a very good video to have because k is a real nasty product to patch. It doesn't always um, come up well and it's tricky to patch. Hi, hi Boots and hi Yellow Gloves, hi Dave. Um, so, yeah, uh, harsh things. Do a wee job this week, Sans Cement. I was just wondering about getting it on the bottom of levels as they are smooth what do you recommend to keep it sticking um, concrete lintels yeah so Boots is asking me about concrete lintels how to get a good ball on it um, there's, there's a few sort of things you can go after um, you could scud them with uh, I show that in the stone jobs that I do where I was doing scud coats and red brick so you could scud your lentils and some people use an exterior PVA and you could use SBR you could paint it on and coat over it and or you could add that to your mix you can make a, a stronger batch just for all your lentils and um, the SBR will give it real high strength and great grip as well so I hope I hope you can sort of you know use I don't know if you're doing the job for build or anything but you can Boots, you can definitely suggest them things to him. Ultimately, if you're doing the job for somebody else and they're supplying materials, you can only give them your opinion and advice. It will be up to them what they choose on doing. Obviously, that's that sometimes is a bit of a pain when you're not, you know, when it's not all your your own way on the job. It's not your job, you know. Um, so you will you definitely have to. Like, if it was me, let, let the concrete lentils, you could definitely use a strong exterior PVA and then um, just coat, coat on over it when it's nice and sticky and or use the SBR and you could just have one ball mixed with the SBR, paint, paint them areas and then hit them areas as you go, scratch the whole wall, keep that one ball, you know, or that one tub separate and just scratch all your concrete with that. Um, make bit, get a wee bit confused and stuff but it, I've done it in certain jobs and it, it can come in really handy and work for them um, so not, not too many of us left ah, thistle bonded mate um, yeah I, w I wouldn't recommend thistle bonded I, I did the other saying thistle bonded definitely thistle bonded I have actually I know a few people who have used thistle bonded outside and it's worked and it's lasted but I tend to find that thistle bond when it gets wet it can soften up a slight wee bit so being outside obviously you might get away with it if you have a real good waterproofer through your mix like SBR through the mix plus the pink waterproofer you might get away with the moisture it'll never penetrate it but you still would run that risk and I would definitely keep there is I think there's acrylic SBR or sorry acrylic bonded agents as well that you could paint over them and they'll give a, a gritty texture as well um, but again I do know builders and plasters that have just coated sand cement overheads and um, funny enough that we're talking about concrete lentils and heads and stuff here I have one I have a wee job coming up that the person obviously used nothing and have used a weak mix on top of things and it's about to pop off so I'll probably be able to just pick it off with an old shell or even my hand and show you the benefits SBR and exterior PVA have where if that had been done right I would never be able to take, take this off by hand um, just there's for instance bands in the background um, so Dangerous Dave says he's done it but Yeah, so like I said, the industry Dave says he, he's tried it and it's worked. I, 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 I've seen in forums, other plaster forums, and people, some guys have used thistle bonded outside and floated big big walls. 
um, and it's came out with very well for them but I heard a few other people saying that it cracked bad um, I know I used it inside a builder decided I wanted to scud a job and he decided it would be quicker to, to thistle bond it and have me float over it as it was painted black and I think it came out well um, it never never came off or anything so it will work for sand cement inside but if you're outside it may, may be a, a different different scenario um, thanks all gloves man yeah yeah I'm doing good here um, definitely your channel's doing super as well some some good funny videos on the old glove stuff um, and games and stuff as well guys if you're, you're in the a bit of a laugh he has some good videos yeah yeah definitely it's yeah k Rand is definitely one of a kind the ten patch um the, the sort of acrylic renders i haven't actually patched any of it but again i don't think it would be too too easy um patching patching acrylic i think it would be very very difficult um, what's up guy RFW guys um, quality videos on his channel as well so if, if anybody's even watching this live stream later on and wants to know he's got loads and loads and loads of videos on skimming and um, also K rend and acrylic renders I think he has a video where he's patching K rend as well definitely 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 not an easy job to do but it can, can be done with different wee te techniques and tactics um, STO rent. Um, what what's STO rent? I'm not sure I've used STO rent. Is that? I wonder is that the same as the rent that agent where you can paint on? That's 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 another tactic you could use. Um, on your concrete lentils is uh, rent aid where you just you can roll it on or put it on the hot and towel and then just go straight over it. Um, Stow rain. I'm I'm not sure if you stow rain now, buddy. Um, not sure. I'll have to look look that one up now. Cause that's it's it might maybe something new. Oh, silicone stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've used I call it acrylic render. Um, Weber do it and K rain do it. Um, the silicone render. It's. Yeah, it's. I think it's a brilliant finish. I actually like the finish. Um, getting it to that finish, I'm sure all the plasters in here will agree with me. Um, that it's it's a hard hard on your body. I find it hard on your body. There's a lot of scraping involved. Um, it's a lot of muscle. Also, if you're doing a big area, um, I know RFW when he first think started his videos was on a lot of acrylic, um, and he he had a guy helping him. It's if you're doing a big area, it's not really, it's not. A, I wouldn't advise using just yourself working on it, because um, you will tear and you have to work with speed a bit, like pebble dash. And I wouldn't advise. I know I have pebble dash on big areas, but I wouldn't advise just having a go. It's better with help. Um, you know, you'll not get caught out if you have extra hands. Um, but also with the likes of that acrylic, that the, the problem would come is that you need somebody that knows how to use it so you couldn't just you know you couldn't just get a few boys in that are good at skimming and good at rendering but have never used it you would maybe have to show them on a couple of small walls and get them get them the hang of it that way um yeah boots well rendered you might want to look that up but scudding may be the cheapest option but it is messy that's the only thing when you if you're working around a window you're going to splatter that window it would maybe tape up the window or put boards up on, on it, protect the glass and save yourself maybe half an hour just washing that window down at the end of the day. You'll probably have to wash it a wee bit anyway, but yeah, there's guys come up with, with good good ideas with the legs. If it's inside, you could thistle bond it and stuff. Um, so you definitely you have options. Um, you know, pick, pick what, what would be easier for you, maybe cheaper and um, cost effective, you know. There's definitely things the things to sort of to think about that way. Um, so definitely. Um. Yeah. Well, 
just getting asked about how I finish the you can use you can use the just a flat of a steel trowel, Dave. Well, I, I, I do, I'm sure you have different ways of finishing it too. Um, but I found, believe it or not, that the Plazi Flex was really good on it. It just glided over even more than a steel, the stainless steel. It glided over very, very light on your arms. Um, again, I know RFW, I think he was using the wee, wee clear plastic ones, and a lot of people like to use them for finishing. Um, you finish it as you go. Well, I finish it as I go, so if I coated a couple of hogfuls, I would get it scraped back as much as I could and then float it up. Um, float it up. You can use the same trial. I have a video on it, Dave, myself actually, of doing a small job. Um, me and a friend did his front wall with it, and he's told me he's got so many compliments with the neighbours and so many people trying to actually copy, replicate his, his good work now. So. Um, he might find that he will get he will he will get m more of that work in the future um, in his own street that way. Um, so sorry, I just sort of lapsed on me. Um, so if he does get it and he wants me to help, um, I'll be sure to make some videos and get them uploaded. Uh, there, there's Andrew, yeah, I, I answered, sorry buddy, I, I've answered all, all your videos at the start of this stream, um, so you might want to actually watch this again later, but yes, again, um, the cement that I use, Andrew, mostly, is uh, uh, this here blue circle, funny enough, and this is what it's nigh bagged as, is a general purpose cement, large raft, sorry, I'm probably reading it wrong, I'm sure the company loves that shout out and given and for wet dice I also use Quinn cement they would be the two most popular cements I would use for wet dice um, so sort of on that the, the reason why is mostly would be contrast if they're not going to paint if I'm doing a big fancy country house and it has coins, bands, base I would try and talk them into doing a wet dice finish with the Quinn and rub everything up and scratch everything else with the the blue circle cement so that it the, the bands will stand out, the base, the coins, everything will stand out separately from the dash coat so they don't have to paint it straight away. They, they have that contrast, they don't have to say let's paint. You know, they could get ten years out of it before it's sort of maybe starting looking dull and dirty or anything. Um before they'll just say let's paint because um, I know once once anybody starts painting the house you're tied to it every one two years you have to repaint it there's a lot of preparation in painting as well where there's some country houses out, out around where I live out around the lock and stuff there and um, one I did with an old boss and we would always have wet dyed them houses with the Quinn and um, I, I wouldn't recommend using Quinn Quinn will probably hate me for saying this but for rubbing up and stuff, I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe inside it's not so bad. Um, Quinn cement may not be so bad inside for your devil floating because you know if it's a bit stickier and you can play around with it a wee, wee bit longer, leave it on a wee bit longer. But if you're gonna rub up smooth, definitely would recommend the the blue circle cement. Um, that was all at the start there, as it's a lot easier to work with. Um, actually, a guy John that was my tag tutor. Back in back in the days, doing school on plastering, he told me I'm not even sure what truth's in this or not, but he says that plasters don't like rubbing up with Quinn, and the reason they don't like rubbing up with it is there's plaster sizer in it already. There's already size in it, which you know there's a, there could be a wee bit of truth in it. In the fact that it does feel very sticky when you're dashing with, you know, it does just it's nice on a trial as well. You know, it's good and trial, it's nice. Um, but that that's that's really the main reasons why, buddy, is is color. Um, it, I'm not sure about strength. I've never tested. I've never made mixes and tested their strengths or anything. Um, but I imagine they're they're all about the same strength ways. There is later on in this video. I'm going to talk about fondue cement, which is it's like a castle cement, and I'll maybe get a wee chat about it. Yeah, so boots definitely 
Yeah, if you're working around new doors, new doors and windows, definitely going to be worth taping them bad boys up. Uh, see if you getting shouted at for the big splatters of cement up and stuff that way. Um, also, guys, I was asked about ratios. Um, I'll drop back on Andrew's question uh, again. So, um, but I was asked about ratios of my undercoat and my final coat. So, gen- generally, 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 um, can almost speak. I can speak as well as I can type and read. Um, but then that's why I'm a plaster and not an office worker. So the sketch coat you see in the background there, guys, that's an undercoat. That would be most jobs. That would be a three to one, three to one mix, which is three sand, one cement. I have a video, believe it or not, I have videos of me mixing, and I do have these ratios there as well. So maybe, maybe if you're wanting to know my ratios and stuff, it'd be worth. Sort of going on them. I might try and dedicate some videos, um, some videos just exactly just for ratios, um, and the the top coat then would be affordable. You want to just sort of drop the cement as you come out, and the scientific reason for that is that it will bond better. If you have three to one on three to one, it might not stick. More likely, it will stick, but. Um, yes, boots, buddy. Thanks, thanks for stopping in. Gonna have a great big dinner myself. Yep, and I ho- hope you are all having a good family day. We're actually going for a walk soon, as it's drying up here. Again, we're almost out of the winter here, and we're getting into the better, the better weather here. So once this contract that I'm on now ends, I'm hoping to to get out into the sun and showing some of these jobs I'm talking about. Um, the likes of that lentil that's going to be a, a great wee topic I think and a couple more sort of pebble dyson get a lot, a lot of views on the pebble dyson one um, and a lot of sort of people seem to be angry about it too I'm not sure it's because I'm showing it's how, how I do it you know um, obviously people do things different but sort of I feel a couple of plasters don't really like me showing and telling um, sort of giving advice on helping other plasters, I'm not sure why. Um, most often the guy says you can probably never learn off a video how to plaster a wall. Um, maybe not, but you might be able to learn off many of videos while you put your hand to it and have a go. You'll definitely not learn just from watching, you're gonna have to have a go. <laughs> so I'll have to agree with that, you know. Um, so yes, Andrew, that's that's a good point on how how to keep the color the same all the way through. So that's I did cover at the start. So basically, if I was going to wet dice a wall or dry dice a wall, my, my my tactic would be say it's going to be a big tub of mortar, which is it's like a wee bath. I'm not sure if any of you guys have have them or use them on sites. Um, like I said at the start as well. Um, that you could be from Australia or America, and your cement, your Portland cement is going to be different than the likes of mine. Um, but again, different brands will be different colors. So, um, you know, you have you have to sort of take take that out of it. Um, obviously, you know, here I have Quinn. I, I'm talking about the brands I use. So you might not have them brands, but you will have similar cements that do the same thing but again how do I keep my batch of dash the same colour all the way through um, <clears throat> pardon me I have seen people using Quinn and it coming up blotchy looking and um, that could be to do with a wetter mix with a bit of a tighter mix and um, basically they've diluted their cement a wee bit more and it's dried out funny and or the rain has came down and hit it the rain can give you white streaks white tips on your dash Lime can do that too. Lime in your mix can give it a wee white, a white tip on on your sort of on your dice finish when it dries out. Believe it or not, and it, it looks like it looks like calcium, like it's calcium, sort of something you would see in a in a cave. It's run down and sort of sad again. And um, that's a lime. I keep getting off the topic. That that would be like what lime would do. Um, but back onto the topic. Basically, what I would do is I would mix enough dash to complete the whole wall in one go um, and what I would do there I wouldn't even, I wouldn't 
Like, I, I can measure things out very well, but I would try and give myself, if it's a big job, like so this job here we're looking at in the background, a big job like that, I would try and give myself a, maybe a ball and a half and count that as waste, 5% waste each, 10% waste each. I would aim to have that wee bit extra because the last thing you really want is to be mixing another batch halfway down the wall. But again, if they're going to paint the wall, that's fine. You may not mind so much. But I've had in the past people tell me they're going to paint things and not paint them because they were happy enough. So you have to keep that in mind as well that if they don't paint it quickly, um, it don't, may take time for it to dry out fully ready for paint. You don't want to have your name to a wall that's been diced with three different kinds of cement and it's three different types of mixes, you know. It's going to look all blotchy. There's actually up around where I live, there's been a few sort of estates have went up and the people diced them. It looks like four different people mixed four different mixes and diced the same house. And looked like two, three different guys diced it different directions, different angles. And when it rains, it looks like parts of it have had waterproof rain and other parts doesn't. And it really looks atrocious. They could do with being painted to hide it, in my opinion. Um, I hope whoever owns them houses or whoever did them is not really watching and thinking and bitching about them. But it does look bad. It genuinely does look bad when it's drying out and it's all different colours. You want it to be uniform. So that's, that's the way I would go after it. I would mix up a big tub. Or say I want, I want that, could, that could be about six, seven barrelfuls of, of dash, wet dash, and mix it all up, have it ready. Um, say you are going to run out and you know you're going to run out, but you still have some, try and judge it by, say you have a full tub, judge it and halfway down the tub. Try then to mix it then so that you can mix it into each other, you can stir them into each other. Um, ho hopefully this info is sort of helping you Andrew buddy um, again um, the other technique I use is before I put it in the mixer I'll have wet dice not so bad have dirtier buckets if you're going for a colour coat like a wet uh, if you're going for a wet dice that's white you need brand, basically go out and buy yourself five new buckets just to pour it into um, but again back to it I would measure out each bucket so that say you're going um, even if you're you're rubbing up you, you need four to one for your top coat I would literally fill up four buckets of sand and pour them into the mixer and one bucket of cement and pour it in and you'll be able to judge um, how much water you need plus if you're gonna mix three mixes to fill your tub you can put them in and then if you're worried that they're all you can stir that tub around a bit with a shovel or a big bucket scoop or fine I have a big bucket scoop I think probably about four years ago I was using one and it was handy to sort of mix up and um, if you're fighting the stuff sometimes the water rises at the top of the weight that the likes of that bucket scoop was dimming right, right down and I could stir it up and keep it all fresh so I hope, hope that sort of helps Andrew and um, cover that there how I sort of keep my colours all off all nice and matched the whole way through um, hopefully I can once this contract ends um, if it ever ends I'll I'll sort of show that as well um, I do have hair hair can I can replicate sort of white backgrounds and stuff sort of dirty it down and stuff um, there's ways to do that as well I'm going to try and sort of so much when you're talking about, well I find when I talk about plaster with other plasters you end up talking all day about things and um, you think you think we didn't do enough in work that we'll have to sit and talk about it on our lunch breaks and stuff but um, definitely the way people do things it's it's interesting um, like for instance the scratcher we used here is different um, it's a different scratcher than I normally use I normally use a comb scratcher so I find it I like them better personally and um, I've used both for years and I've I definitely do favour the, the sort of comb more than the the, the, the white handle one that Rambo tools and stuff are using at the minute um, or selling at the minute um, but yeah Boots it's definitely been one long long winter um, I hope that's the end of it It was it's wet now it's drying up here so hopefully get out and go for a wee walk uh, and actually enjoy my sixth day off from Christmas been, it's been, been pretty hard working you know the, the job we're on now, it's not just, wouldn't be as frantic 
as rendering a house and dashing a house but at times it was frantic and just the hours were, that everybody's putting in definitely very very tiring um, so when you're putting hours in it does does get tiring that way um, but like I have seen a squad of us putting on a lot of tubs in a day and not, not really interested in going back to, to, to driving that hard at the game um, actually that's that's going to be like another topic that I'll do a live stream on maybe later on um, later on and cover that but um, so yeah so the likes of that band would be that's done with uh, Blue Circle and if I wanted to dash I could dash it with another brand of cement which would contrast when the dry out they'll be different colours from each other um, but yeah I wanted to cover Castle Cement um, older plasters if anybody either have been plastering longer than me will know Castle Cement as fondue which is what I remembered it as it wasn't until I was talking to the guy at work the other day and he said I always thought there was a castle on but I never th actually thought type in castle cement and believe it or not it's castle cement so it's a, a rapid set sort of stuff this is blue circle here guys this is the stuff I would use mostly um, and this is what it has changed its bags to it's, they've changed into that and um, they also have a post creep that sets in 10 minutes that's a good product if you're doing posts. This is the castle cement I was talking about. Sets in about 10 minutes, very, very, very quick. Um, as you can see, quick sand, quick cement. So you could add a wee batch at Never ever put that in your mixer. Never ever put it in your mixer. Just mix it there, ready mix in a bucket or something. Um, and that's eco sand I've used. And I've used legging cement. Both very similar. I found that the dried. This is the Legend Cement again. I found it a dried lovely. I'm a lovely, lovely, lovely for rubbing up. Quinn Cement, I wouldn't really rub up with it, but I would do wet dash. And this is Alborg, a white cement again, which is brilliant for your white dashing and your white wet dash. And RTU is the company that I would most times, if, if, if I was getting stuff ordered in ready mixed RTU is the company I would go to um, if I was getting ready mixed screen people ask me about screen a lot um, sort of how I mix it and all as well I, have, I think I've only got one or two videos up of me screen a job that I do genuinely try to avoid as it's sore on your back as anybody with, with any experience in it will, will know um, especially I, I'm a wee bit tall so getting up and down and stretching out you have to stretch your arms out and squeeze it back definitely will, will pull the, the back out of you um, that, that sort of way um, believe it or not the, the wet dice there are in the background as well it was a different stone I talked about it before there's different stones you can use in your wet dice too so you can use it as a, a contrast if you were doing like a top half and a bottom half um, where the top half of that house didn't come off it was a pebble dash painted so what we did we actually wet dashed it with a pebble that you would normally pebble dash with and believe me it was heavy on my arms somebody recently commented saying that the walls hanging like a bunch of grapes and i'll tell you what it was it was like throwing big lumps of stones at a wall that were very heavy um, but it came out really well and um, drove past it i think that job was done um, I don't know how long ago that was done. It was done a long, long time ago that job particularly. And drove past it and again the top half was was white painted. And the bottom half, they never actually painted the bottom half. So I'm just glad all the mixes were the same because that could have looked party, you know. Obviously the people decided let's not bother painting it, it looks tidy enough. There was a band breaking up the top and bottom so it doesn't look odd or anything. And like I said, I was driving past it. I felt like going up and taking a few pictures, but the way that house was, you would have felt I would have felt, I'd have had to wrap the door and ask and kind of take a few after pictures. So many years later, I would have felt a bit strange going up to the customer and saying that. But um, yeah, especially that was through a builder that job, so that would have definitely been strange. Um, that that sort of way. 
But yeah, the, the likes of that Castle Smith we were talking about. Um, so you would have your mix, say the likes of a stone job, you needed to, to build out somewhere really heavy or a couple of blocks were away pushed in. You could add two scoops to it, to literally a bucket of cement, and it will set rock hard 10 minutes. Um, the same as if you're doing coins, bands and stuff. I like that cement. I wouldn't actually say do coins with it because it would set too quick. Um, but maybe a band, a head or something would be a good idea. Um, put a couple of these scoops in and it'll dry out quicker and set quicker. Um, so definitely there's lots of cements out there. I used legging for rubbing up inside and personally I wouldn't I wouldn't mind. I think you could do bands and stuff with that pretty well. Um, it'll dry out nice for you. The same as the Eco Sand, the the Irish cement as well. They both dry nicely. Uh, the, to me, the, them sort of three would seem to be all the same company. It seemed like it was the exact same cement when I was using it. Um, but yeah, I think I've, I've covered. I think I've covered all them questions about. Um, sort of the only thing I didn't cover would be my wet dash ratios and um, there's loads of ratios some people like I said use lime I myself try to stay away from lime I know lime's, lime's a great product but um, y- you need to cover up well when you're working with it same as carrying there's lime and carrying and then you would have the tiniest wee cut and by the end of that day that cut would be five times bigger just sort of open right up on you and you know sunburns um, so that's one of the reasons why I try and stay away from lime and you can also overdo it with lime you put too many shovel scoopfuls in and your sand and cement won't be as strong so it's just that would be another thing to sort of have to think about constantly um, that way but again I know people that use lime love it um, and that's brilliant uh, if it works for you definitely always always do what works for you always use the tools that work for you um, but a lot, a lot of mates they, they, they were taught using lame so you're obviously always going to do what you're taught because if somebody's teaching you it obviously worked for them it's for years and they're not going to teach you to do something for them that's not going to last so most people do do what they're taught to do um, on that basis so yeah guys um, I'll try and make a few more uh, definitely another couple of topics I want to cover on plastering and I can't wait to sort of get them me dashing jobs right up as well and um, show you you a laugh at the job and I pick it off you by my hand um, and I couldn't be couldn't be f- couldn't be seven years old even I wouldn't have thought and I would say it went both within a year anyway but yeah anyway, guys thanks for all the the comments and the questions and um, again if you're catching this later on you can or you're still watching and you haven't asked any questions don't be afraid to drop in questions on this video when it's not live I'll be sure to answer you either in the comments or make a wee video up and help you out um, definitely trying to help people out progress in the trade um, definitely you know knowledge knowledge is only knowledge you know you can't you have to pass it on otherwise it will die and um, so that way but yeah thanks for watching guys and i'll look forward to the next one with you all